Today's video is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury attorney law firm ready to fight for you. When dealing with the consequence of injury, sometimes it can feel like you have no options and that receiving proper compensation just isn't plausible. But Morgan & Morgan is here to fight for you. Did you know that proper representation from a lawyer is said to gain on average three times more compensation than fighting a case on your own? With 800 attorneys in 49 different states covering a major range of specialties and expertise, Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. And the best part, Morgan & Morgan operates using a no-win, no-fee basis to put your mind at ease while you focus on getting justice. If you're interested in what you hear, check out Morgan & Morgan for yourself by clicking the link in the description of this video, or using your phone, you can dial pound law. That's pound 529. Or visit www.forthepeople.com to get started on receiving the compensation you deserve. One of the more memorable mob hits in city history. A gunman walks into a crowded restaurant and shot Nicky Scarfo Jr. Now, he survived, but 20 years later, he's on the FBI's radar screen again. Nicky Scarfo Jr., the son of the imprisoned crime boss of Philadelphia, was shot this evening in a South Philadelphia restaurant. Police say a man wearing a yellow mask walked into Dante and Luigi's restaurant between Catherine and Fitzwater on 10th. About 8.15, an open fire with an automatic weapon. Scarfo was hit three times, twice in the chest, once in the neck. He is in critical condition at Jefferson. According to informants, on Halloween night, October 31st, 1989, Philly gangster and future alleged Philadelphia crime boss, Joseph Skinny Joey Molino, would arm himself with a MAC-10 9mm automatic machine gun while wearing a yellow ski mask and holding a trick-or-treat bag, and would make his way to Dante and Luigi's restaurant on the corner of Catherine and 10th Street in Philadelphia's Southside where he had the drop on the then-imprisoned Philadelphia crime family boss, little Nicky Scarfo's son, Nick Scarfo Jr., who was seated at a table inside. Merlino is said to have entered the restaurant holding the gun in the trick-or-treat bag, and after spotting his target, who was eating spaghetti and clams at the time, he would then aim the gun and fire a total of eight shots at Scarfo Jr., allegedly hitting him under his right ear, his right shoulder, three times in his upper left arm, once in his upper left chest, and a final shot grazing him across his chin, landing a total of seven shots altogether. Two of the shots went right through Scarfo Jr., leaving two exit wounds as well. One which came out the midline of the back of his neck where it meets the hairline, and another coming out below his right breastbone. Miraculously, Nick Jr. would come out of this still breathing, with doctors saying he was alive only by a matter of inches. Upon fleeing the scene, it said Merlino intentionally dropped the gun at the scene of the crime as an F.U. to Nicky Scarfo Sr., whose M.O. was to leave his gun behind after shooting his victims as sort of an homage to the movie The Godfather, mimicking a character from the movie who would do the same thing. Despite the allegations from law enforcement and multiple government cooperators who placed Merlino as the trigger man that night, Skinny Joe Merlino was never charged for the murder and has denied any involvement repeatedly in the hit. After being released from prison in 2011 on his racketeering charges while eating lunch in Florida, Molino stated he couldn't have been the shooter that night because at the time he was on supervised release for his armored truck robbery case and because of his strict curfew, he wasn't allowed to be out past 7 p.m. Nicky Scarfo Jr., who's now serving a 30-year sentence in the feds after being convicted of his involvement in a multi-million dollar financial fraud case, has never spoke to anyone publicly about the shooting. But in phone conversations that were secretly recorded by the feds with his father, little Nicky Scarfo Sr., who's doing time in the feds on a murder Rico case, it said the Scarfos called Merlino a snake, and Scarfo Sr. was quoted telling his son to take Merlino to dinner, which is suspected to mean return the favor and have Merlino whacked for his botch hit attempt. Following those conversations, word started making it around in reports that little Nicky Scarfo had put a $500,000 bounty on Molino's head from prison. When one reporter asked Skinny Joey what he thought about the reports, he told the reporter, give me the $500,000 and I'll shoot myself. This Molino Scarfo hit attempt was just one of many hits that would take place over the years. Molino's father, Salvatore Chucky Molino, and little Nicky Scarfo were friends since way back and were said to be very close at one point. In 1981, Scarfo Sr. would become head of the Philly crime family after taking out Philip the Chicken Man Testa with a nail bomb. 
and Salvatore Chucky Molino would move up the underworld ladder as well, eventually becoming Little Nicky's underboss. And Chucky's brother Lawrence Molino, aka Yogi, would also move up the ranks to captain. A few years later, in 1985, the friendship started to go left between Little Nicky Scarfo and both Salvatore and Lawrence Molino, with Scarfo demoting the brothers and threatening to kill their family following Salvatore and Molino's drunk driving arrest. Some say the relationship really went bad because Salvatore Chucky Molino developed a drinking problem and after getting into a fight with the Pagan Motorcycle Club and running over one of the members, the Pagans retaliated by shooting up his mother's house but leaving her unharmed. But because of that incident, little Nicky cut ties with Molino and demoted him and his brother to soldiers. Obviously that would lead to bad blood between the two families, but both little Nicky Scarfo Sr and Salvatore Chucky Molino, who had committed allegedly multiple murders together over the years, would end up locked up in the feds. Molino, in 1988, charged along with 17 other mobsters with Rico and being found guilty of taking part in illegal gambling business as well as two counts of distribution of meth, and sentenced to 45 years. Little Nicky was arrested and charged sometime between 1987 and 1989 and would be convicted of conspiracy, racketeering, and murder in the first degree and sentenced to life in prison. With Skinny Joey and Scarfo Jr.'s fathers in prison, they were now on their own and fighting to take control of the Philly criminal underworld. Little Nicky would try to have his son Nick Jr. step up as acting boss, although people who were around them say the kid wasn't cut out for the job. Following the 1989 Halloween hit attempt, Little Nicky would make a major mistake by sending his son to North Jersey, leaving him in the care of the Newark faction of the Scarfo organization with a man named George Fresalone, who was a major player in the gambling and loan sharking rackets. But unbeknownst to the Scarfos, Fresalone had flipped and was wearing a wire and recording all their conversations as well as having his phone tapped, which would lead to Scarfo's 30-year prison sentence. After Scarfo Jr.'s arrest, another power struggle would begin, leaving lots of blood spilled throughout the streets of Philadelphia. With both the Scarfos in prison, another Philly mobster named John Stanford would receive the blessing of the commission of New York's five families to take over as new boss of the family. In 1990, Molino would be arrested for conspiring to steal $350,000 in an armored truck robbery and be sentenced to four years in prison. During his bid while in McKean Correctional Institution, Molino would get acquainted with an old-time Philly gangster named Ralph Natale, who was serving a 16-year sentence. The two men would begin plotting to overthrow the new leadership of the Philly crime family, new boss John Stanford. This collaboration would continue the Philly mob war for many years, which I'll break down in my next video. Keep your eyes open for part two, where we get into the details of Skinny Joe Molino's alleged deadly and bloody rise to power, becoming boss of the Philly crime family.